live right now. Cool. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Me too. Yay! <laughs> Hi guys. Um, so this is our Afro Latinx read along live show. And I've got Jesse from Bowties and Books and Capri from Capri's Book Island. And unfortunately, Karina from Bookish Babbles could not make it tonight, um, but we are, you know, good to go. So I don't know if anyone wants to start leading the discussion or if like, I don't know what you guys, how you guys <laughs> want to start. Sorry, I had our live show open on another tab and I heard my voice and just freaked out for a Oh no, time. I've done that. Well, I've done that with other things though. So like where your own <laughs> echo scares you. Yeah, because I'm yeah, such a yeah. Oh my God, your okay. Hufflepuff mug. I'm dead inside. Cute. Thank you. Oh, thank you. My former roommate got it for me and it's one of my favorite rug That's rugs. Okay. Mugs. I'm tired. <laughs> no, it's okay. I feel you. I'm like fighting a headache and. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay because I have um, frijoles on in my crock pot right now. So like, Ooh. I'm so excited. I keep like running over and tasting the broth, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. but they're not cooking because I keep opening it, letting all the steam out, but <laughs> like beans always make me feel better. I don't know. Um, it's keeping in theme awesome. for tonight's show. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. In theme. Um, okay. So it depends on if y'all want to discuss shadow shaper first or Dominicana first. Mm, I think Shadow Shaper will be easier to talk about first just because it's like like fun and quick and yeah. then Dominicana is more like deep. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, Dominicana has layers, yo. Like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was a like, lot of layers. I, I uh, there's a lot to unpack with that book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was no, there is. Say, okay, yeah. we can start with, with Shadow Shaper. Um cool. So I'm like referring to the little, okay. So like the first thing that I had written down was like the thoughts y'all had on the writing style. Um, <laughs> see, that's the thing. I listened, I listened to it on audiobook for both of them. Nice. So I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I, I really enjoyed the story. I liked the way that the setting was made. Like I liked, I liked how like, I really, really like the way that the setting was made. Like they made sure you understood where they were at in New York. And like, you really felt like you were vibing with the people and like, it just, you, you felt it come off the page. Um, but it was like certain things. I was just like, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think all the characters were super, super, super um, memorable. I felt like they had like a lot of person for me. <laughs> <laughs> that face is like no <laughs> I don't know I felt like they were really like bright like they, they were, were memorable like they had like a lot of personality but sometimes I would mix them up like they all had like a similar like Bronx New York style personality and they were easy to like confuse like because they all kind of were similar in a way I guess I'm trying to keep my shade to myself <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go, 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 go. Yeah, go. Please, roast this book. <laughs> I feel Please. like, okay, like... Wait, let me get my notes lot, too. Huh? No, go ahead. There's a lot that I liked about Shadow Shaper, but my my biggest issue was the writing style. Um, I felt like we had a lot of character dumping. We had like 20 plus characters in this book. Maybe not yeah. quite 20, but like a high amount of characters. And the physical descriptions for them were very minimalist. So it was like, you didn't really latch on. Like it was difficult to create. Um, what they looked like. Yeah, it, like not only just that image, but like to solidify who they were as people. The only time that we got that was through the the um, the dialogue. And yeah, because, yeah, yeah. You know, it's set in bed you know, it's set in Brooklyn. The characters are Afro-Latinx for the most part. Like. They, all, they have a similarity between them, right? Because like they grew up in this shared space, which is great. But when you add that with like very minimalist writing style and then you introduce all these characters at once, I was like, yeah, yeah. I didn't care about anybody. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? I did not care. I did not care. What did, you, what did you rate the book? Where the hell are my notes? What's happening here? Um, I probably would rate this three stars. 
Um, just because the right, the writing style was, was very weak for me. Um, that doesn't mean I didn't like it, but I just needed, it was very, it was so dialogue driven. And I was like, it was yeah. a little too dialogue driven for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think this is a good example of a book that would maybe make a good television show or screenplay. Um, because <laughs> it was it should be a screenplay. I'm dead. Okay, <laughs> like a screenplay, though. Like. <laughs> okay, so I think what? this is another perfect example of why three stars isn't a bad rating because I didn't hate this book. I have read, I've read a lot worse. I just, I think maybe the writing style was for people like a younger age group yeah. than me because it was a yep, little too yep. simplistic. But I could see like giving this to maybe a high schooler who isn't super interested in reading and you want to get them into reading. This is maybe something I would recommend, but um, I didn't like it. I had some issues with the villain. I like, it, it was a great concept and very poorly executed. Like I hated yeah. the, of the villain. Yeah. There was no and building or motivation or anything with, with the villain. It was just like with the villain, Evil. it was like it, it had so <laughs> much potential. And it yes. just was like fell right flat, right yep. to the ground, like hard, yeah. hard like, flat. I loved the concept of the villain, but by the time Sierra um, got to like the final confrontation, I felt almost no animosity between them. Yeah, yeah. I been for the showdown for five minutes. Like no, yeah. like, there was no building up <laughs> yes. to yeah. the conflict. Yeah, okay. and the same about the characters. I. I liked Sierra well enough and I liked Robbie. I thought he was kind of nice and everyone else was just like, Oh, boyfriend. Oh, girlfriend. Oh yeah. They were all oh, mom person. Yeah. Like I didn't care. I forgot all of their names. So exactly. <laughs> There's like her yeah. brother Juan and the two girls and her other best friend who's into boy. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I gave I gave it four stars, but only because I felt like it had so much potential. And I feel like if it was like executed a little bit differently, it could have been so much better. But like I don't know. I really like the audiobook. Like that was the main thing. The the voices or the voice for the audiobook was like I went through that book. I think I finished that book in like a day or like a day and a half because it was just like it was so quick and it felt like you were in the setting, but then it was like, can we talk about that magic system that was going on? Like, I was confused. It, I don't get it how felt, it worked. Yes, it felt so flat for me. I was like, okay, so. So chalk. I, I, <laughs> I was just like, so uh, we got the drawing going on here. Do like, y'all remember, uh, remember that cartoon? It was a kid's cartoon where they drew chalk. They drew with chalk and the chalk would come to life. Chalk zone? Vaguely. Chalk zone. That's what <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Show. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Like, like, uh, what do you call chalk zone? I was fucking like, yeah. <laughs> yes. That, like, yeah. I love that show. Could, and they tried to like explain, they tried to explain how like, I don't know. They tried to explain like how it worked and everything, but it still was, it was, it was so flat for me. I was like, I don't get what, what the hell the point. Yeah, I feel like it's because they explained as they went along, um, you know, and so it was kind of, it kind of reads like nothing was pre-planned. It was like, okay, we're going to address problems in the text as they arise or explain the world building as the need becomes necessary, um, which is not my favorite way to introduce magic or like, you know, um, yeah. but like, like Taylor said, I feel like this book, like, I think that Daniel Jose really had the youth in mind. Like just with the way that it was writing, the language yeah. used, you mm -hmm. know, like I think it was like youth who don't read a whole lot. Um, but I still think like that said, there still were so many themes that really stuck out to me and really impressed me that I really, really got behind. Um, like, so like yeah. what? Um, like how, like I really liked, for example, mind you, this was like Taylor said, the execution of this was poorly done, but like how the villain represented like gentrification and represented, you know, people coming in and trying to displace you. 
right culture but then at, but then at the same time they were displacing they were displacing the culture but he was admiring it at the same time and it was showing the fault and like admiration but taking yeah. away from a group yes. of people and then from the start of the book yep. you see how much like art and um yep. music and dance and culture is like ensued in every single character yep. and then to have someone from the outside obsess over it read about it and just like try to take over it was exactly. really invasive and it really helped you see how that is not okay. Yep. But it's still yeah. the, the villain, even though the villain fell flat, I like the way that was depicted because it yeah. showed you how that's how it affects people and their culture and, and, and how mm -hmm. obsessing over something like that and being like, Ooh, I want to know more about it. I want to get into it. And, and you don't have to do with that. How mm. is the problem? You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Is he crossed over really from foundation claiming? What Taylor? Oh no, I was going to say it had really like solid foundations. Like yeah. the villain. I just I don't know. I wish I would have seen more of a transition with him. Like how yeah, to like from admiration and trying to understand right, culture to right. trying yeah. to take over that culture and trying yeah, yeah. to impose himself in it and not looking at it from that culture's perspective, but looking at it from like a white perspective. Yep. Right. I don't right. know. Just if, if they showed him like gradually obsessing over it and we saw him kind of lose his mind a little bit, yeah. I feel like that would have been better for like the depiction of the villain than for it to be like, ooh, you know, he's obsessing over the culture and then all of a sudden we got zombies and shit walking around. I was like, okay, so did you guys get that that whole thing? <laughs> well, okay, so I have a theory and like let me know if I'm reading into this too much, but because the book was so much about like gentrification and like acculturation, I felt like the, what, what were they called? The corpuscles where like the, their bodies would be possessed. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. felt like that was like distinctly representative of people of color who, how do I put this? <laughs> people of color. <laughs> Break it on down. Who reject their <laughs> culture and forget their roots. And I'm not saying like, I'm not talking about people of color who have that stolen from them, but make a very mindful choice to be like, no, I'm going to distance myself and to like try and assimilate at the expense of their own culture. Like it felt to me like that was a direct uh, symbol of like people of color turning their back who have turned their backs on their roots. You know, but you know, what? that's that. How do I say this? <laughs> you know, that I, I, I do agree with that because her mother, they showed parts, was it her mother or her, her mom? And it was mainly her mother that was just kind of like, keep that shit away from me, wasn't it? Where she was just like, I, mean, I don't want nothing both. to do with that. Yeah, wasn't the aunt, like the aunt wasn't too down aunt, with that either. Yeah, well, yeah, she wasn't down with nothing but herself. Yeah, she was, the worst. She, she, was, she, was she was a lot, she was yeah. a lot. Yeah. I bet do she any, did, did were like, any of, she would have felt different. Do any of the kids <laughs> remind you of anyone in your family? Yeah. Yeah? Huh? No? I'm sorry. I, I missed that last statement. Oh, I said, did any of the characters in the book remind you of your, like, family members? Yeah? Um. I don't know if I'm going to spill all of the tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I'm just wondering if it was just me. Okay. Just I mean, I feel like when you're, you know, like when you're Afro Latinx, you always have that at least what in my case, like it wasn't one, it was like my main family, but like you always there's always that one family member that feels the need to both like remind you constantly of your blackness. Mm, and a negative and a negative light too. Like yeah, like it's an issue, you know. But We'll also like say really anti-black things around you with this air of like, but you're one of us, so it's okay. You know what I mean? Like there's like a dichotomy there. And I, yeah, you know, Thea, I don't remember her name. Um, it doesn't matter, but the, yeah. the anti-black <laughs> Thea, she, I don't know, she reminded me of so many of my family members uh, who to this day will still say like very anti-black things. Yeah. But a lot of times like, and even like coming from my own mother, like there were so many times growing up where family members would say things like, oh, it's too bad you got your father's nose or it's too bad you got the nappy hair. And what's yeah. funny though about that, like obviously that's like yeah. super fucked up, but the ironic thing about this is I was sitting down with my grandpa who was black like a month ago. My grandpa was like, how's your abuela doing? And 
I showed him a photo of her and I was like, oh, she's doing good. And he looked at me and he was like, you know, <laughs> he was like, you know, the Mexican side of your family blames me for the for the black nose, but your grandmother is not innocent neither. Because if you look <laughs> at my familia on like the Mexican side, like we all have wide ass noses. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's yeah. like, but we pretend that we don't because we don't want to admit that like blackness is they in, like to draw draw that yeah, fine yeah. line. Yeah. They like They're to like, keep that line they, right there. Yeah. They do. Like they, it's crazy because you'll have like Afro-Latinx people who are clearly Afro-Latinx just denying outright. <laughs> <Yeah. know? laughs> no. I had like this experience where I was talking to one of my sorority sisters years back and she was like black. Like you could tell she was black. And I made some comment like, oh, you know, it's hard, you know, sometimes being a sorority girl when you're, you know, black. And she was like, I'm not black. And I was like, but she was like, I'm Puerto Rican. And I was like, yeah, I'm and black, right? <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah. And okay, so question. Was, okay. Question. Are you guys gonna read? Isn't there a second book? Is there a second one? There's three like a trilogy, right? Yeah, there's three. I am gonna continue because I am curious to see the development, but I'm not like Jumping excited, anticipated, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I am curious and I want to feature the other two in the um, the Black Girl Magic series because I feel like if there are kids watching, like this is a book that they- Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the Black Girl Magic series is the reason that I'm gonna continue with this. I think maybe the audiobooks I'll continue with. I don't know if I can sit down and read the text because I did a mix of both. And sometimes even the audiobook was a little cringy. Um, we were talking earlier about how it was clearly meant for maybe a younger audience and some of the like the dialogue seemed a little bit too much like how do you do fellow kids you know what i mean trying to yeah. get the, like, <laughs> ha, trying to get like the with it slang and stuff like that and yeah. i don't know if i can listen to that <laughs> yeah. or, you know that I, meme that says that's what i was referring to <laughs> that one of so demons funny. it's your boy <laughs> Don't know if I got time for that. I'll turn the damn audiobook off so fast. <laughs> it's me, your boy. <laughs> I'm dead. I can't I, find my notes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of up in the air. I'm one of those people where if I like the book, but I'm not like excited about anything else, I'll just pretend it's a standalone book. I don't need to know anything else. They solved an issue. Um I solved an issue. Know, Sierra kind of destroyed John Wick in a way that I was, it was a little horrifying I, to listen I'm to. I'm trying to remember what the ending was. Didn't she turn into like some magnificent spirit that was floating in the air and some shit happened? I was okay. so, I read it so fast. <laughs> I, 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 no, the, that's the thing, like when you get to the end of the book, you're supposed to be like, yay, I'm so excited to find out what happened. I literally like zoomed through the end because I was just like, okay, there was like, okay, like her her grandmother or something was like a magnificent being, and then she turned into what? What, what the hell happened? I don't remember. I just like, okay. I just remember I, I replayed it like fifteen times. You know how you zone out for like yeah. thirty minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> zone way the hell out. I was like, okay, I rewind. I, I replayed it so many times, and I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I really just fucking don't remember. It was just, it was yeah. like, what? Didn't she turn into like a magical being, or she was her grandmother's magical being, or something? She was some sort of spirit being, and then she like took a bunch of spirits and just sort of like shot them through John Wick, and mm. it turned his teeth black and made them all fall out or something. Which I yeah, guess she I showed know. him. Um, I don't know. Okay. It was the way it was described was a little violent and I'm not saying like he doesn't deserve what he had coming to him, but I think I was just so overwhelmed because I didn't care about the, I was too focused on the wasted potential with the villain and with the yeah. show. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm always going to go back to the villain here because I'm still so salty that it did not yeah. turn out the way I wanted it to turn out. Well, I feel like it's for me, one dimensional villains, is my biggest pet peeve in YA fantasies. Huge mm -hmm. pet peeve. Because the, the villain is like, in a way, the driving force, the driving conflict for the whole story. Yep. Yeah. You know? only reason I'm reading, that's the only reason I'm gonna read it. Cause if, if there's no conflict, then what the hell is the point? Like they're running around 
and wasn't it like some bodies that were like randomly showing up that were like zombies and they didn't know what happened to them and it, it was just like little pieces that should have been put together better and it was not and, and things like shit would happen and then they would just like move on like they would find a body and then just like yes <laughs> everybody would gather and they would just like move on and i'm like but that's like a really serious thing or like they would be chased by someone and then they would just like move on and i'm just it wasn't it, it just should have been it's very shallow it yeah. should have been yeah just that, move that together was, a, little, a little bit better a little bit i better. noticed that a lot with the friend group where like yes two of them didn't take it well but everybody else was like all right she's magical like great and i was like <laughs> yeah, yeah that too i'm just like okay um <laughs> what, did bring up? what did they bring to the fight like they went uh, and just stood there and someone had a broom, like to the have broom killed me. I was like, <laughs> oh, the hocus pocus. <laughs> the broom. I was. Like, oh god. <laughs> I no. and then like the final like argument between one of like the two friends when they were on the subway or something, and they were like, "I know we already got in the subway." But we don't want to do this anymore. And they had this whole weird fight, and people were mad at them for being scared. Like, I don't know. Like, it was a stupid fight to begin with because I was like, yeah, I'm on, I'm with those people who don't want to go there. Like, yeah, oh, there are zombies and spirits. And I don't know. That whole fight just really pissed me off. Yeah. No the fight it. the fight lacked too. I was just like, okay, like so much was happening, but I felt like nothing was happening. I was just like, okay, like I really just didn't care. And for like such a big scene like that where like the villain comes head on with like the the main character and all the little group of friends and all that, you're supposed to be like rooting for somebody. I didn't give a shit what happened or who died or what was going on. <laughs> I was just like, whatever, you know, like and that's 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 not the best thing. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. I will say the only, there were there were really two, the only thing in the book that I actually cared about because I felt like it was the only things that were really like well delved into and handled were when um, Sierra was struggling with her body image issues yeah. or not even with, yeah. I feel like she was struggling with like not how she looked, but how people responded to how she looked. Uh -huh. yeah. You know? yeah. And I loved that she recognized that her blackness was beautiful and she wasn't ashamed of it, but she had to kind of force her family to feel the same way. Um, I liked seeing that versus like the self hating, internalized self hate. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, that was really nice. And I liked that there were some times where like consent was kind of addressed, like with Robbie when she has that first fight with him and she's like, you can't come in. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's arguing with him or he's trying to explain himself. And then he, she starts crying and she, he comes into her room and she was like, I did not give you permission to enter my room. And he's like, you're right. I'm sorry. Or something. And there were so, there were, there were some times like that throughout the book where she yeah. where he would say or do something that was problematic and she would check him. Um, and he would, he would understand. Yeah. yeah. So like, I feel like there were some like socio-political things. Oh, and the um, when she got hurt and she was outside of the, um, I think it was like the Puerto Rican club and all the white people were standing around and they were oh, like druggy yeah. and all these things. And they just didn't, they didn't assume that she needed help. They just assumed the worst of her. Um, yeah. And I liked how that was a theme throughout the book. How like, I think it was her, one of her Theo's like, was going trying to get her into the library, so he just set his suitcase down and walked away, and everybody panicked because of like, yeah. <laughs> something in the street, you know. Um, yeah, and he was the best character. I loved him. Yeah, he was great. He it's, was the one who was driving the car, right? Yeah, yeah, the car. Yeah, it's you know. Okay, so that's this is another thing I want to talk. It's so weird to me how people are scared of like ethnic culture or Spanish people, black people, blah blah, whatever. But then they admire their features. They admire their culture. They admire them as people, but they don't respect. It's weird to me, like, like little, sh little shit like that, where like people were like, oh, freaking out about him leaving, moving the suitcase, or like her being passed out, and instead of like helping her, like a normal human being, everybody's like, oh, well, she probably gonna, she probably was fighting, or she's probably drunk, or whatever. Yeah, but then they turn around and want to go to like 
museum and like do a Spanish night or like, oh, I want my lips bigger. Oh, I want my, I want to be shaped like this. Like they admire the feature. They admire the culture. They admire all this, but they don't respect the person. And it's, ah, that just, <laughs> another that thing kind of the villain. That, yeah, the, it's a perfect example of like how the villain is a drug crazy because that it's so true though. Like, I mean, it's an unpopular opinion, but I have a theory about the whole cultural appreciation thing. I honestly think nine times out of ten, when someone's like, "I'm appreciating the culture," they're not actually performing appreciation. They oh. are. Um, what is the word? Usually when someone's like, I'm appreciating the culture by going to this concert or doing this or doing that, um, what they're doing. Fetishizing? Yes. Yes. And yeah. I feel like a lot of people mistake because there's no way that you can truly appreciate a culture, truly recognize and respect and love a culture if you don't love the people behind it. Yeah. There's, it's either fetishization or appreciation. People who are in love with you know, Latinx culture, Afro culture, et cetera, but are scared of black people, yeah. Latinos, do not truly <clears throat> that culture. They're fetishizing it. They're fetishizing yeah, the yeah. parts that they themselves want to obtain. Um, and so anytime someone claims to appreciate like our culture, but is scared of us, I'm like, that's, that's like, like make sense. Fetishization. it's not appreciation. Mind you, like appreciation yeah. does exist, but it doesn't look like that. Yeah. yeah, you, you can't be that. you can't be clutching your purse and, and and freaking the hell out every time you're in the same room. There's a whole bunch of black people or Spanish people, but then turn around and want to do salsa night or some shit. Like get the hell, <laughs> yeah, you know. And it's hell like, here. <laughs> and it's like I feel like appreciation of something. Like you can appreciate something and not feel the need to be part of it. There are so many things that I appreciate and love. Like you know, um, like I have a lot of appreciation for you know. Um, Let's let's say Japanese culture, but I'm not like running around, like performing Japanese makeup and wearing, ja you know what I mean? Like, because I appreciate yeah. it, I don't need to put that on my body personally. I can yeah. do that without being a part of it, you know? Yeah. That's a very basic example. It's more nuanced than that, you know? But yeah. yeah. And that's the thing too. There's like so much nuance to things like this. And sometimes there it's a gray line rather than yeah. a straight, like, you know, line and, you know, I, for me, it's always turning, you can always turn to someone of that culture. And I mean, not saying you should always ask when you have every little question that pops up, but maybe like, Hey, um, one of my friends thought it, it would be culturally appropriate. Appro uh, she would be culturally appropriating Mexican culture. She dressed up as mama Imelda from Coco for Halloween. And I, it was one of those thin lines cause she was Puerto Rican and it was one of those very thin lines where it's like, I, I can't give you an answer for that. You know, yeah. I don't know. Because for me, you know, me personally, I wouldn't have an issue, but you know, I'm not every single Mexican out there on in the world, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're not you're, you're not the spokesperson for an entire culture. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Personally, yeah. I do not want people to ask me things like that. Don't fucking ask me those questions. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> then what you're going to say? Oh, well, Capri told me. Yeah. Like, Who the fuck am I? <laughs> Definitely <laughs> didn't tell you shit. I'm not about to. You know, and like, name drop me. Not uh -uh. Doing it. Huh? That's what I'm just saying. Don't name drop me. Like, don't ask me for my yeah. advice. And then when somebody tell you they don't like it and they're the same <laughs> culture as me or same race as me. But, well, Capri said, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put me in that. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm, no. cut, yeah. cut. I'm a head out. <laughs> you know, I'm good. Like, no, thank you. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, I can't, dude. And I feel like personally, if you're, I don't know, if you're only not dressing up as something or not doing something because someone told you not to, versus you having a true understanding, like what means more to me is somebody who's like, does the thing. It's about how you react. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. hey, like you did something that was uh, it was appropriative. You you didn't know or whatever, and now you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> versus like yeah. you being scared to do literally anything, and you not doing that thing because you are afraid of criticize of being criticized. You know, yeah. it's like, um, not doing things because you're afraid of criticism is an issue for me. Um, yeah.
like you're not gonna die. It's gonna be okay. You'll get you'll get the <laughs> you'll, you'll be fine. I promise you will survive. Like I fucking <laughs> there's been so many times where like I've been called out and criticized for things and I'm still alive and well. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we're gonna yeah. we're and it is all how do you take the criticism if you immediately are on the defensive, like, no, you're wrong, I can do XYZ, whatever then, you know, people are going to think you're an ass. But, like, if you yeah. take that criticism, you know, well, I'll do better, right. you know, or I'll educate myself. Yep. I mean, do it. Yeah. If you if it, if it is really that important to you to wear a fucking kimono or a sombrero, you do it. But if you get <laughs> Yeah, ass, no. It's not the best. <laughs> 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 don't, don't do it. Like, <laughs> uh, don't do it. No. I would tell you, I would be it. like, yeah, you, you knew you were you knew getting your butt beat was a possibility. And what did you learn? <laughs> you done goo. <laughs> you know? Hi, everybody. I see people comment and says, hi. Hello. <laughs> I can't see any of the comments, but- I see them on the side. I see oh, them on the side. Oh. Here. Okay. Yeah. So okay, no, Starla it. from Starla Reads. Let's see if I can do this. Yes, there it is. It's Ooh. popped up on the bottom. So Starla says, yes, exactly. I don't speak for my entire culture slash race. Yeah. And that's something that I think is br what brings in the gray areas because what bothers me as someone who's Afro Latinx might not bother you, Jesse, or might not bother you, Capri. Exactly and because we had different upbringings. Like we might all, upbringing. all of us are obviously different from different races, different cultures, different parts of the world, whatever. But like somebody, me personally, I'm very disconnected from like the Puerto Rican side of my family. So somebody might ask me something about something and I won't personally care because like I don't see an issue with it but for someone else it might be an issue so that's why I'm just like I hate when someone asks like oh is this okay or is that okay like if you have to ask then you know the shit is wrong okay <laughs> don't, do, don't do it okay don't ask me yeah, yeah. Okay? or at least tread lightly <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's a great example about like disconnect and so on because Jesse and I are both half black and half Mexican and I believe you were raised, Jesse, more by, or you were closer to your uh, Mexican side. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I was raised closer to my black side and my dad's side of the family, which is the Mexican side, they are very Americanized because when they were growing up, it was more assimilation. You assimilate to white culture and so on. So that connection yeah. to my culture is, I don't want to say severed because it's not, but it's very, you know, I don't know how to know how to describe no, it. It's I, I did. I'm saying it was saying. impacted yeah. by Americanization, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. you know, my experience or my relationship to my Mexican culture might be different from yours, Jesse. And, you know, obviously, as much as I would like to be queen of the Mexicans, I can't speak for all of them. <laughs> What's the income for that? Because I'd <laughs> You know? Speaking of that, we should just roll on into Dominicana because let's yeah. do it. Yeah, I don't have a lot of time for this. Let's, 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 like like a a ride, let's roll on into that because there was okay. so much to unpack in that book. Yo. I'm doing my little notes here. <laughs> I couldn't find my notes for the other one. We gonna get my book mm -hmm. is so tabbed. It is. So I, uh, tabbed. Listen, mm, I, I started like the notes here. It, and then my past trauma with annotations came in and I stopped tabbing, but I have many thoughts. <laughs> okay, so do we want to first talk about the writing style? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I read it. I listened to the, you, did you read it? Okay, you read it physically. I listened to the audio book. Okay. Okay. I, I read the physical copy. Okay. I'll say I really like the writing style in this. It made it really, a really fast read for me. So it, flo it flowed. The flow was really great. Um, and I liked how dialogue was handled. At first, I was very much side eyeing the like no quotation marks approach to it, but I, I loved it eventually. So. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually, uh, I got used to it. Oh, I feel that. I feel like I wasn't expecting to love the writing as much as I did. Um, like it's minimalist and it has this almost like hazy feel, but the dis it has a distinct rhythm to it, right? And so mm -hmm. I found myself reading aloud to myself from this book because the writing was so rhythmic 
it felt like it should be spoken. Like it was almost like spoken word and it created, even though it was very hands off, it still created very vivid imagery in my mind. Um, so that a lot of the events in the story really impacted me, not even just because I related to a lot of them, but because the writing just resonated. And like even the lack of quotations, I feel like, I don't know, it. I have, I have theories about the quotation style, but Ooh. it's it's gonna it's probably gonna sound insane, but I feel like the way that the story reads, um, to me, okay, so you know how when you know that moment where you're talking to your um your grandparents and you realize you have that one moment where you realize that your grandparents had lives before they had children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. if either you were like connected to your grandparents, but I remember that moment where I found out that like my grandmother had a whole ass life before she became my abuela, you know, and I was like, oh my God, you're a person yeah. apart yeah. from your family. And so to me, like part of the reason that this book hit me so hard is because my theory is that this book is written with the intention of the reader having that realization about their own grandparents, like realizing the things that your grandparents went through before mm -hmm. they became your grandparents. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a yeah. grandmother talking to her future generations. Like this- It was a small little like Easter eggs. Like even like, like when she would talk to her mother, she would put little points in like, oh, well my mother was like really strong. And then they would like, she would talk about how her mom and her dad met. And like, they would like put little <laughs> pinpoints of like yeah. her mother's life before and like what, how it, how she became who she is now and like even what like her cousins and her siblings and like everything there will be like little small points where you can see like a little look into like how their lives are outside from just like the main point of view of the entire story yes. like those little little pieces yeah there are even points like with her brother and even when before she joined one in um in new york where they had their own little moments and you could see what these who, who these men were that were such a big part of her life without being connected to her. Yeah. So it created this like family atmosphere, this like almost like omnipotent understanding of the family unit and where everybody's like motivations and feelings and desires were. Um, mm -hmm. Even though she couldn't see them, you know, like even though mm -hmm. she didn't fully understand, they, they still played a big part into the story. Yeah. 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 I really like the idea of this being a sort of, oral form of storytelling like it's Anna talking to some relative about her experience I really do vibe with that same. yeah same absolutely luxurious blue Shane says um I love that it was to the point yet still had some art to the writing style yeah, yeah. and it reminds me so much of like I don't know what like what your grandparents are like but my grandmother and even my mom, when she tells stories are just so vivid, you know? And it just like the whole book reminded me of like sitting at my parents' feet and listening to them tell me stories about their childhood, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I haven't read a book that hit me like that so personally and made me feel like the family in the book was my family in a really long time. Maybe, yeah. it, maybe not ever to the extent that like it resonated, you know? Yeah. I feel I like that, I feel like this book really gives you like the experience of like what it's like to come to America as like Dominican, you know what I, you know what I mean? And like, yeah, it, it was like every little thing was like perfectly. I don't want to say perfectly, but I I felt like like I understood everything that was happening, like the way it was explained, the setting that it was put in, like the admiration of like coming to America. It's gonna because like when like there was so much shit that I was like, I was like, where, like what, what happened now? Cause she was like 15 <laughs> and he what, 32? Mm, 37. <laughs> I was looking around like, um, and then all her family members that are excited. They were more focused on like, oh, well she's going to America and everything's gonna be good. Everything's gonna be perfect and all this. And I'm like, nobody cares about the age difference or yeah. the fact I that she didn't know English, any yeah. of that. Yeah. That's a concern. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was just, uh, yeah. There was, there was a, a quote um, earlier in the story before she went. Oh my God, I just, I literally just turned to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. 
Okay, and so um, Anna, that's fucking crazy. Okay, anyway, <laughs> Mama is talking to her, and she's crying because she's she has to go to New York with this grown man. And um, Anna's mama says, "Please try and be happy. It kills your father to see your sad face all the time." And yeah. so it was like. Be happy so that the men in your family don't have to witness the burden mm -hmm. of your sadness. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you're not allowed to cry and mourn the loss of your innocence, you know, your childhood, your familia, like everything that yeah. you're Um, That hit me so hard, you know? I feel like when that whole thing was happening, I like that. <clears throat> like right when she was like about to get married and everything, they, they flipped it to like show her innocence where she had like her first kiss. Yeah. And then it really just shakes you a little bit, like, okay, like, she's still really young. You know what I mean? Like, even though all this was going on, and you're like, I, I mean, because it's not, like, back then, it wasn't, like, weird for, like, these, these this big of an age difference. Yeah. So it's like, you're like, at, at first, you're like, okay, well, that's just how it is. But then they flip it at the same time for her to get her first kiss and how she felt and, like, how giddy she was and all this right when she was, like, about to get married or whatever. <laughs> and it really opened your eyes to see like this is like she's a, a child you know it, yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's something too about when she was coming to america it said on her like passport or whatever that she was 19 and there's yeah. this line like, in just a few like hours i lost four years of my life yes and that mm -hmm. like yeah that's, that's depressing heavy. that was heavy yeah. but what i find interesting is like the motivations because so much is happening in the dominican republic at this time and what i I mean, I didn't know any of this was happening in real life. Either. You know what I mean? I didn't know. I hadn't heard of any of this. So that was an interesting point to me. But I don't want to say I understand where the mother is coming from and wanting to get her family to America or to safety. Because it's really tough to say like, oh, well, I get where she's coming from when she's literally selling her child yep. to yeah. a man. Yep. But it's also something where, I don't know. I don't know if I'm what I'm saying is coming across correctly. Yeah, because yeah. You oh, can't no, justify it, but also there's this understanding of this sort of desperation to get her family out of what is yeah. a terrible situation. Right. And she she tried her best to kind of set her up with like pinpoints of like what to do to she tried her best to protect her where she's just like, Oh, well, don't do this and make sure you take money and put it to the side and make sure you do this and make sure you do that because like her mother's main focus was like ambition to get her family the fuck up out of a toxic terrifying situation right and she had to use her daughter to do that which is like shitty but i i don't want to say i i, I agree because i would never do yeah. something like that yeah but it's like i i get it like i get like how she felt and like everything and like her ambition to get her family to level up even though america is that's a whole other story but <laughs> It's like, oh, no, that's not right, okay? Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it's interesting, the thing about, like, the mother, because I actually, the mother, who is, yes, some a, a sort of an anti-character, but I think that she did try, like you said, Capri, she tried so hard to, even though, you know, she was, like, ripping Anna from her family, she tried so hard to depart wisdom and mm -hmm. i loved i loved that even though she was literally the number one person in anna's life who was like putting her down hurting her responsible in part for her displacement but at the end of the story when you know it's like she becomes it was popping off yep yep and everything mm -hmm. that um her mother said to her like there's a there's a part on page 25 where she says she talks about, she's like, I promise nothing bad will happen to you. You'll go to New York, you'll clean his house, you'll cook him the right kind of food, et cetera. You'll demand he take care of you. You sneak off your, your own money on the side, et cetera. And she's teaching her how to run this man. Just yeah. Latinas have always run their men, have always yep. controlled their households, their cultures, mm -hmm. even though we have this idea that Latinx culture is very patriarchal. But in reality, it's like, 
who is truly managing the money, who is truly making the decisions. Like it's, it's, it's the women yeah. every time, you know, every single time. Like, yep. It's not a coincidence that at the end of the story, there was like, there was Cesar who, Cesar who Anna loved deeply. There was Juan, there were her other family members. There was, you know, Yanni, all these men that she, except for, you know, um, what was it? What was her husband? Juan. Like, all these men that she loved except for Juan, but out mm -hmm. of all of those men, the only one who truly came through and protected her and defended her at the end of the day was her mother. And I think exactly, that's very, very exactly. intentional, you know, yep. about the connection that Latinx women have with each other and like the way that Latinx women hold each other up. Yep, yep. And I feel like when she went there, she was missing that. And like, cause she always had so many women around her and her family. And even though you didn't really get too much of that vibe at the start of the book, mm -hmm. you did see that she was close with her family, but you didn't really get to see the one-on-one -on -one spot until she was by herself. Then she would think back to like, oh, I miss my cousin. I miss my sister. I miss mm -hmm. whatever. And like the second that she met Shady Shit, what's, what's the child name? The girl? Marissa. 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 Yeah. She was yearning for that like friendship and that like that, you know, you know, women just have this clicking thing, you know, like where you just like click together. Some people you click with someone, some people you don't, but like when you miss like having like a close knit, just having women around you, she was like yearning for that, especially because she was always in the house, always making sure everything was perfectly fine and whatever. And she just needed a girlfriend. So that whole situation, I didn't trust that girl from the second that I asked God to page. I was like, eh, eh no, no, mm -hmm. no. I did, I did not trust her. I was like, she's scheming. Like, get her out of here. Don't yeah, trust scheming. her. And, oh. I just wanted to scream at the. I just wanted to scream. I was like, no, girl. But she. I, I had to keep remembering, like, she's young. Like, it, so much was happening, but not really that much was happening. And I felt like months and years and stuff were going by, but she still was like the same age. So I'm just like, okay, she, yeah, she's gonna fall for it, isn't she? Yeah, she's gonna fall. For it. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. That whole situation was just like, it was sad though because like, I wanted her to have that little like sisterhood type deal going on. With, what was the girl's name? Marisa? Yeah. Marisa? I, wanted, I wanted them to, to be like friends, you know? Yeah, it didn't work out that way. I didn't trust that girl. Was so yeah. 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 Were there, um, huh? Did you say something? To oh, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Were there any quotes in particular that stuck out to y'all? Um, That's yeah, cute. It resonated. Um, I wish I had the physical copy. I thought I wrote one down. Oh my God. As a side note, while y'all are looking for your quotes, I just found this page that I wanted to bring up in connection to like uh, Anna's mama. That scene where Anna is bleeding and her mother um, picks her up. And uh -huh. um, I got to find this line because like I had full blown chills like all over my body. The line where she says, um, da, 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 da. oh, she says, Juan, her husband is trying to get to Anna. It says, Juan says, tries to move mama out of his way. Don't touch me, she says in a guttural voice and get away from Anna. Mama bends her knees and lifts me from the floor. They don't know she has lifted animals even heavier than me. Yo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I love that. Just chills. Like the I see, I don't I have to say I don't have the physical copy, but like I wrote like little yeah. excerpts of stuff I remember. But there was a part where she was like this I, I don't know. I just like this one part where she was like describing like the complexion and like the uh, what was it the fuck was his name? Was it Cesar? Cesar, Cesar. yeah. Oh, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Where, it, where they were like getting into it, a and she was like <laughs> describing like him, like his sensuality and his complexion. And it wasn't just like, you know how aggravated I get where, where authors describe every black person as like chocolate, chocolate, yeah. <laughs> chocolate, <laughs> every yeah. time. They have that same dry ass like, um, like description and like just that, how in depth that was. And it was like, oh, she said like, he's like every soul food I crave. And he's like not, yes. you know, that, that mm -hmm. one part, that whole that whole description. Just that, I can't remember what page it was on. What the hell happened? But that description of like his sensuality, 
his 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 persona, everything. It just was like that one little excerpt was just like yeah. Yeah. that was a good part. It was good. Uh, I know. I loved the the description of her sexuality and her desire were some of my favorite parts of the book. Yep. So yep. well done. The more she came in tune with it, the better it was. Yeah. It, also, it was more her taking control of herself and her body because yep. in the beginning, mm -hmm. she, like Juan was just controlling her sexuality. So yeah. him leaving and her taking more control over that was great. I yep. will say, I didn't like Cesar. I really didn't like him. Oh, I like tea. <laughs> I did not like him. Really? Why? Well, one, he's 20. Funny? So he's 20. In You're the book, old? they mentioned. Yeah. No. They mentioned he's 20 in the book. Is he? Yeah. Hmm. I thought he was 17 or 18, especially with the way he was acting. So I was more partial to him. But then they mentioned at one point that he's 20. And I was not down with that. Okay. Mm, well, uh, I mean that's better than thirty shit. What the hell? Thirty two, thirty seven. <laughs> I, I, mean, I was, was ranting about this with my sister, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess Cesar, Cesar hit the bare minimum because he wasn't thirty seven. <laughs> I don't know. I like his character. I, I. He also annoyed me, but that's <laughs> <laughs> just go straight for the head, like. I know. I, I get why people would like him, and I guess I get why Anna likes him. Yeah. That basis being, he's not Juan. Um, but yeah. I just... Yeah. Maybe it's because I was putting myself in Anna's situation, and every time he did something silly, I was like, boy, sit down. I don't but have time I, for suffering. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> even though I, I like their, their, their scenes and stuff together, I wish they stayed as friends. <laughs> because, yeah, like, I... I I didn't expect, I genuinely didn't expect the whole love interest thing that was going on up in there. I, I didn't see it coming. I thought they were just like friends. Like I thought, like there were like little parts where like he would say something or she would say something. And I'd be like, what the hell is going on up there? But then I'd be like, nah, right? Because they're brothers. And so yeah. she want to do that. But she did that. So I was Maybe like, okay. Also, uh, I wasn't down with that. If you, you can find each other on a family tree, it's too close. Too close. He, he, he's his brother, isn't he? Yeah. No, Wildin. Yo, she has no allegiance to this man. No, I'm talking about her <laughs> husband. You think about the messy family That's situation me. when she has her baby, her kid's stepfather would be his uncle. That is a whole is that? shit mess. That's her <laughs> husband's brother. Like, that ain't okay. I was just like, mm -mm. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. First of all, logical. they're not even technically married. Okay, so let's start there. I mean, <laughs> we had no choice to marry this man. And so if she just so happens to fall in love with somebody who is his brother, who cares? I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I mean, for me, it's more like, no, it's not like the allegiance thing. I totally get like, she owes Juan nothing. He is a trash man. And yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right like me it's more like the thought if you can find each other on a family tree it's too close but I, that's just I, a personal preference it's not an actual issue i think i had with the book it was just one of those things that i was like okay i guess that's okay okay it just was like weird to me because i'm like what the hell are they gonna do they're gonna still see each other like if she ended up with him she's gonna still see Juan, and she has a kid with Juan, <laughs> and i'm like what the hell? It is. It didn't make it. Make it was too messy for me. And like honestly, I enjoyed like their scenes together where like he was kind of like a breath of f fresh air and like showed her like she would do small stuff for him. He would do small stuff for her. They were vibing. She didn't feel like she was in a damn cage. You know, they kind of were like insightful towards each other. I just I enjoyed their friendship, and I did not see uh, Smash Central coming on. Like I didn't see that coming. And then he was like, "Let's run away together." And I'm like, "What the hell?" She just uh, she just had your brother's face. I was okay. Mm -hmm. it was, it was a lot. Maybe it's uh, also like there isn't a man in Anna's life, maybe other than her father and her brother, who doesn't want something from her in some yeah, way. Yeah. Like Juan and Cesar obviously have romantic attachments. And I guess Cesar would have made a better friend. I maybe it's just because I don't like Cesar and I'm like, <laughs> he's not as bad as Juan. I just really didn't like him. Really? I I don't know. I liked his character. I thought he was 
he he was a hoe. Wasn't he a hoe? He had, like, yeah. He, yeah. So that was like my main issue with him. I'm like, okay. And then even like where he went and got like the house and like, let's run away together. It was like with some girl that he was with. I was like, this this is a hot ass mess. Okay. You know, had the child two seconds to go and now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think a big part of the reason why I love Cesar so much is that he is like literally the black sheep of the family. Like he just, he was born darker than the rest of his brothers with the kinkier hair. And I love seeing him navigate his blackness and come to terms with it and celebrate it. Um, mm -hmm. And I loved seeing that character growth and all of the like nuance that that brought to not only like the community, but the book. I'm trying to see if I have like a quote on this. Um, but that's like why Cesar was so special to me um, because, you know, of, of his relationship with his blackness and how he found himself in Harlem um, and how I love seeing how like Juan was always really against him going to Harlem and him associating with people who looked like him and how there was that scene where like Cesar couldn't pass the paper bag test and couldn't get into the club. Mm -hmm, and, yeah. you know, um, and that just like really made my heart go out to him. Um, especially because what was funny is like Juan would continuously throughout the book say things like those blacks, et cetera, mm -hmm. those people, when in reality he black too. You black. You black. <laughs> you light bright don't mean you're not black. Sit down. Uh, every time I was just like, so, like, like black comes in so many different colors, and they're all intertwined into so many different. <sighs> and your brother is them, black. Your blood brother. That you yeah. Share yeah. Your and well, <laughs> every culture, like yeah. every culture, not like not even just like Spanish culture, black culture. Every culture, colorism is so alive and well. It's it's yeah. seen that like if you're a fair skin, you're better, or you have a like they just. It just seems easier. You know what I mean? I, yeah. And Juan still way. went into the like club or bar without his brother. And Juan's a trash man too. I no, don't. Juan freaking sucks. You know. Um, yeah, I just Juan. looked at that, that scene where um, Ana and Cesar are selling pastelitos, and there's that white lady who Ooh. wants to take a, a picture, and Cesar's like, "I don't want that. I don't want that." And um, he becomes very submissive in front of this white woman who's being very, very rude to him. Yeah. And, um, Anna talks about how it reminds her, the way that she speaks to Cesar reminds her of how Juan speaks about those blacks, the Puerto Ricans and Jewish people and Americans and anyone not Dominican. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and so I just felt like there were so many layers to that, how like Anna didn't completely understand Cesar's pain because she, doesn't experience that the same way that he does. Yeah. You know, but she also recognizes that there's prejudice there because mm -hmm. she it echoes the prejudice that Juan has said to her. You know, so she's like beginning to understand like anti-blackness. That whole scene really aggravated the shit out of me. Okay. I was getting hot at work. I was ready to flip the damn I was just ready to turn off the damn audiobook. But because it was just like they were there like props. You know, she like they were trying to they were trying to hustle and embrace their culture and be like, let's run these people's pockets, okay? And then, like, as soon as they get there, people want to take pictures with them. And then it was, I think it was a part where she was, like, when they stood there and, like, that whole scene happened, they, they lost a part of themselves. Like, there was, like, a small piece. But it just, it just, oh, that part really just, like, because I feel like she was so excited about, like, the costumes and, and stuff and everything that they were wearing and what they were doing. But yeah. the second that they were looked at, like little props, like little, ooh, let me take a picture, like, ooh, like, it, it wasn't exciting anymore. She wanted to get the hell up out of there, and she was just, like, over the whole situation. And I just, that's that's yeah. a, that's back to where I was saying earlier, like, people love the culture. They love to look in and take pictures and smile and all this shit, but they don't respect the person. Like, she was the lady, and everyone else was just, were disrespecting them as people. But yep. they were so infatuated with the colors and the food and the yeah. dress and all this shit that you weren't respecting the person. And they're staying there feeling like ostracized, like mm -hmm. breaking down a little bit on the inside, not making any money. But people want to take pictures and like ah, the whole scene really just. Especially when that white lady asked them to take a photo 
And then when Cesar is like, would you buy some fruit, food from us? She, the same white lady goes, you know, these Dominicans, are, or these blacks always want something from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. literally just you ask them for it. it. Are they just asking yeah. for something like... Yeah. <laughs> oh man yeah. yeah so okay so did you did y'all have like a face since we've talked so much about the characters that we hate <laughs> did y'all have a favorite character did we have um, in the story i liked anna i thought she was incredibly sympathetic and it was really nice reading something like this from her point of view because i you know, my family doesn't really have like an immigration story because okay. my grandpa was um, born in America. Yeah. Wink, yeah. but you know, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, so I don't. We don't have a lot of immigration stories. So, so reading this, it does sound like I'm getting told personally. Like Anna's sitting, like we were saying, like Anna's talking to a grandchild. Yeah. Anna's telling me personally the story of how she came to America and how she made a life for herself and how she overcame all of these struggles. So I really liked getting things from her point of view, even if I did get not frustrated with her, but frustrated with like the situation. Yeah. You yeah. know, maybe yeah. it was me wanting to go in and big sister everything. Like, mm -hmm. honey, let yeah. me take you to shelter. We're gonna get you, you know, it yep. was frustrating because you know, there's no real out for her. You know, she's not from America. She's underage. So she's technically probably not even in the country legally. She doesn't really speak English. There's no way for her to get out of this abusive situation. Right. So, you know, it was stressful for me to read, but I I really liked Anna. She was my favorite character. Okay. It was what was interesting to me was like the depiction of like abuse in her eyes. Like it, it kind of was like with the seeing how she came to terms with the fact that she was clearly in a domestic violence situation. Yeah. It was a part where she was at the hospital and she had like bruises or something like that. And they gave her a pamphlet and was like, Oh, here, you need this. And she's like, no, what? Well, he only beat my ass when I do something. You know, she was like trying to talk herself down from saying like, Oh, well, I'm technically, I'm not in a domestic violence relationship. And then I think like further into the book, she kind of realized like, um, so this is yeah. not healthy. I need to get the hell up out of here. Like it, you slowly see her start understanding, like just because of the way he does it, doesn't mean it's like not toxic or not abuse or whatever and i don't know i like the way that she figured slowly figured that out like yeah. very very slowly very slowly there yeah um, so and then at the end of the book there was like an interview with the author because i had the audio book and she was talking about how like um what did she say she said she she talked to her mother a lot to get inspiration from for the book because it's kind of, like, loosely based off of, like, her mother's, like, life and situations, stuff like that. And she asked her mom, like, what's something that you think you'll never achieve in life? And her mom said love. And I was just like, damn. Like, that's, that's so crazy to me because I, I feel like a lot of people end up in relationships or end up in marriages, like, for a, a calculated reason, for, like, a financial reason, for, like, a, a come up or whatever. You know, in, in certain well, in certain situations, I don't I don't think that's the, the case with everyone, but I feel like in certain situations, especially when you're trying to get your family to be in a better situation, people marry get married not because of love, but because of like status, kind of. Okay. And I feel like that was picked apart really well, too. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, definitely. Um, Only because like I feel like people that were in relationships in the books because of love it was kind of like shit on, <laughs> like, like hard. <laughs> they were like, no. Well, it's interesting that you say that because my favorite character is Teresa. And my, the reason that she's my favorite character, you know, Anna's sister is because, mm -hmm. you know, Anna, Anna's mama and, you know, the whole family looks down on Teresa because she is promiscuous you know, she had a baby young and she married somebody that she couldn't um, benefit from. But at the end of the story, literally every single character who married for the purposes of furthering their position in society was unhappy. Mm -hmm. Teresa is the only character that has any kind of agency or freedom or joy in the entire story. 
She's the yeah. only one. Even um, Juan and and Yanni and you know uh, and Cesar, they all not so much Cesar because he just does whatever makes him happy. But like <laughs> there was this bit where like Anna was talking about how she really you know she wished that she could didn't have so much expectations on her. And then later there was a part where um, I think it was Anna's mama was talking about Yanni, her younger brother, and she's like you go to school, you get to go to school, but your brother, your little brother is out there in the heat, getting sunburned, selling goods and wares all, yeah. day and all night. Like the, the burden of poverty doesn't just affect women, like it affects boys and you know, it affects everybody, the, yeah. not, not the same, but everybody yeah. suffers. Um, and I just love that Teresa was like, fuck all of that. I'm gonna yeah. do what I want. And so even though it was depicted in a negative light, like she's absolutely the only one who has any joy or agency. Yep. Um, and even like at the end of the story, Juan, Juan, when he had his breakdown, like he couldn't be with the love of his life either because he yeah. knew, you know, so he, they both made sacrifices, both Juan and Anna, obviously Anna's, you know, mama, everybody. Um, so I love, I love Teresa. I think that she's like a badass. Doesn't I like Teresa, her. um, become a Mormon at the end of the book? I thought she did. Yes. Yeah, she does get in with That was Mormon. interesting. That is right, yeah. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't think her marriage is remarked upon later on in the book, like whether or not she ends up happy, but, you know, all of the times that she personally appears on the page, you know, yeah. she her own choices. She And that's the thing is like, even if she does convert to, to Mormonism, that was her decision. Like her yeah, body. Yeah, she's, she's very sure. She's very sure of herself and what she wants to do. And she yeah. tried to get. She tried yeah. to help Anna see that and say, like, you know, do your own thing, sis. Okay, yeah. you gotta follow what everybody's telling you to do. Mm -hmm. Do what makes you happy. And and yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hold on, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick because I have to pee. Um, <laughs> and I will just like jump in wherever you guys are. Okay. When I come back. <laughs> well, I can talk about my quote that I enjoyed. Okay. And that yeah. is, outside, I examine the grave faces of the older men and women standing guard in front of their buildings. Their anger makes me nervous, but I understand it. To be angry and not have the power to control your life, to not feel safe, to depend on a person who reminds you how they can hurt you, even kill you at their whim. I understand. And what that part was that? Because I remember that quote. Near the end, it was when I believe there's like a race riot or like maybe not a riot, oh, maybe like a protest yeah, happening in yeah. New York. What I find interesting is that there were a lot of allusions to stuff happening that I might have known about, but because Anna doesn't really know the context behind them, you don't get like a full explanation. Like it took me, I think, a couple pages after they mentioned the assassination of Malcolm X for me to pick up that it was mm -hmm. Malcolm X. That yeah, they were talking yeah, about. yeah. And uh, yeah, go ahead. It's interesting. No, it was like really interesting to see all of this stuff that I missed because Anna doesn't always understand the context or yeah. she has a very rudimentary understanding of it. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a lot of shit going on. It was like between like all the violence and stuff that was going on in the Dominican Republic, and then like they had like small excerpts of like Black Panther in there as well, yeah. and then. It was a lot happening, but I, I wish it would have been a little bit more in depth, but I think it would have taken away from the story. So I guess it was done. It was done correctly. You know well, what I mean? So. I, I think it also makes sense because um, women like kind of in the 60s, I think it was changing a bit in the 60s, but especially in what we would consider to be a misogynistic society, weren't really expected to know much about politics to begin with. So she doesn't even really know entirely. I don't think she has a full understanding of what's happening in the Dominican Republic, only that there are riots and the government is being upset, you know? Mm -hmm. There's like yeah. a change in power. And it's something that actually makes me want to go back and like research what was happening at the time. Because I know there was a lot of stuff happening with Cuba in like the 60s, but I, I have no idea that anything was going on in the Dominican Republic at either. this time. Yeah, and that the U.S. got involved, which not surprised, but I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either, honestly. But it seemed like it was like violence all around her, but she was dealing with her own shit. You know what I mean? Like, it, like on the outside world, there was all this stuff going on, but then she had her own turmoil that she was dealing with as well. You know what I mean? 
And it yeah. was like, a, it was like a war within her life, a war on the outside world. And it really made you think like, uh, is it safe any damn where? Okay, like it's, it's, it's unsafe over there with the Dominican Republic. It's unsafe as shit over here in America. She got her husband, slap her upside the head every two seconds. It's like all around her, it was like chaotic. And and America was so like put on like a pedestal from her family. And it just was like so interesting to me to see like every single part or a little section of her life, there was like some crazy shit that was going on. Like even, yeah. except when there was like, it was calm like when she was like learning english and stuff like that it was all beautiful and amazing but like you didn't have to be at home you got people fighting over there in dr you got people fighting over here in america it just was like uh, a lot it was a let lot anna lot. take a nap mm -hmm. um right? I, like, do <laughs> uh, I do want to bring up there were two instances of pop culture coming up which i loved but i thought was interesting uh when Juan gets anna a tv she mentions that um well, she alludes to I Love Lucy coming on, which I thought was so interesting because, well, one, I'm an I Love Lucy fan, but it, there are a lot of problems. <laughs> it is very much of the uh, 1950s. But what I thought was interesting was that she loved I Love Lucy for the few moments of Spanish she got in each episode with Ricky Ricardo, but also how normalized it was for... Um, I Love Lucy makes a couple of domestic abuse jokes that are not as bad as the honeymooners but that is a low bar to set but you know the whole like lucy you've got some splaining to do and very like condescending so yeah, i yeah. thought it was interesting how she saw that on television being normalized but also how she connected to i love lucy through the itty bitty uses of spanish and at the time that was like the only representation you got of anyone latinx on television so because yeah. ricky ricardo is cuban um, and then there was a reference to West Side Story, just a minor one, but they were singing I Want to Be in America when, like, Anna's siblings were singing America mm -hmm. when uh, she was going to move, which I thought was interesting because West Side Story also brings up the racial issues in America at the time. But that was something I wanted to bring up. I think, I think the whole I Love Lucy thing was really interesting to me because the way her mother talked about like glamorizing being in America, even when it's shit, she would be like, oh, well, just pretend you're like one of those Hollywood stars type thing. And anytime mm -hmm. something would go wrong, she kind of would like not have an out of body experience, but she would pretend like she was on like the I Love Lucy show. Like she would be like, oh, and the wife walks into the room or something like that to make it seem like she was on television to make it seem like it did not really hit in the fan. Like she tried to like, low she tried to make it I, I feel like like on the low like you can almost like not even see it but she would take herself out of the situation and make it seem like it's a television thing to make it like glamorized so I feel like it stopped her from really getting the full impact of the situation because she would be like oh well this is like how it is on tv like you know this is like similar to I love Lucy like this is what the wife does this is what the husband does she would like yeah make it make it pretty like make it make it make mm -hmm. it seem like it's a television show and it that was yeah. really interesting to me how she dealt with that by doing a little small yeah bit. and she also compared herself at like i think twice to marilyn monroe which was interesting mm -hmm. and twiggy which i don't know if you guys know who twiggy is yeah a very super skinny supermodel back in like the 60s like when you think of like the stereotypical oh. supermodel body type Twiggy was known for that, which is why she was called Twiggy. Yeah. Uh, but, like, she compared her body to, like, Twiggy's unfavorably and stuff like that. So I thought it was really interesting how 1960s pop culture sort of bled in through the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like America's glamorized too damn much, though, but <laughs> that's a whole other story. Uh, I, I don't know. I just... I feel like... Anybody can look at any country or any group of people or anything and be like, ooh, it's so perfect. Ooh, I want to go there. But it's like, it's city, city size and it's good size of everything. And I think like her finally going there and seeing like everything that was going on, she kind of realized that. And I don't know, she kind of, she made it her own once Juan left. I was like, thank God. When he left, she started like learning English. And like, there were certain things I felt like she knew that she needed in order to survive without his ass. 
And like the second that he left, that's when she was like, okay, let's go. Let me like learn some English. Let me figure out my surroundings, get comfortable with like who I am. And I was just thriving. The second that he left, I was so happy. I was like, oh my God, this is so nice. But yeah, I don't know. I was rooting for her. Definitely rooting for her. I just (laughs) wanted her to be, I wanted her to be on her own and not just like, yeah, I really wanted her to be on her own. I, I just wanted her to just like pack all her shit and just like disappear and do her own thing. Yeah. But but I guess yeah. they went with what, or the author went with what she considered to be the more realistic ending mm-hmm. because exactly. a lot of people didn't leave their husbands, you exactly. know, in the, in the 60s. On um, not on, um, I guess, unfortunately, that wasn't part of the culture, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. To stay together because the idea is without a like a good man, and by good man, they just mean can provide. You know, yeah. what are you? What are you doing? So, yeah, that picture perfect idea of, you know, having yeah. everything together. Got the house, got the family, you're in America. Okay, everything's good. Just like having that all together is supposedly is, is just perfection. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, do you guys have anything else you'd like to discuss? Um, and while you say that, I'm going to grab my book, which fell out of my lap. No. So, um, yeah. notes. One piece of hair is driving me crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know oh. if India is still here. I think that was India. But um, to answer your question, no, I did not bring dinner to share. But I was testing <laughs> my beans to see if they were done, and they are done. And they were fire. They came out so good. <laughs> I just turned them off, so I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I have I made um, platano maduro and then uh, pinto beans, so I'm just going to have, like, beans and plantains after this. Ooh. You know? Um, oh, that kind of – I guess that's one thing. I'm looking at my notes. One thing that, like, I really loved in the story – was how food was used as a landline back to the culture. And Mm -hmm. um, that really, really hit me heavily. And I saw myself and my family so much in um, the cell, through the celebration of food um, and the power of cooking. Like I thought that was really phenomenal, especially when there were so many extremely traumatic things happening, not even just to Anna, but to the Dominican immigrant community like how early on in the book, um, you know, kind of almost within like the first three chapters and when Juan is is in New York and he's standing in those lines and he's freezing and, you know, he's just thinking about the food back home and he's thinking about, you know, um, having a taste of the Dominican Republic. And there's that part early on in the book where um, kind of like the disillusionment, they start to realize the disillusionment of being an immigrant in America when immigration gets called and all of these Dominicans get arrested because the factory decided to, you know, call immigration instead of paying them the work. After they did all the damn work. Yeah, Um, and it's a perfect example of how even, because a lot of these factories were also owned by white immigrants. A lot of these factories were owned by like Irishmen. And so it's a perfect example of how even like white immigrants um, or, or whether e- even just like white Americans held back immigrants of color and affected the ability of immigrants of color to build future wealth. Um, yeah. And and so I think that that was like when you start to realize that America is not as it seems. And when Anna starts making food for the uh, uh, the men, you know, that are, are standing in those lines, it's like the men have a lifeline all of a sudden and they, mm-hmm. they look forward to just getting those like pastelitos, you know? Um, yeah. That really hit yeah. me because no matter what I'm going through, there is not a damn thing on this earth that like my mother's cooking cannot fix. Amen. Mm-hmm. And I'm a mother. My, 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 mother my, my mama can't cook. Uh, my grandma, they all say my, definitely my grandma. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'll be burning. My mom be burning shit. I'll be like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> May with love. All right. Thank you, mother. Thank you. I think <laughs> I really like how she, I feel like food was like kind of like her gateway. Like she would use it to try to 
make friends. She tried to make a friend. It was like a neighbor or something like that. She brought Although that lady like food. Me. And that lady was like, the hell up in my yeah. apartment. She was like being super sweet and nice and polite, but she wasn't being genuine. And I Yo, feel like. You too cook. Indiana. <laughs> no, <laughs> not mine. I'm going to be burning stuff, everything. <laughs> I just, just nod and smile, no. nod and smile. Listen, it's. Uh, <laughs> she's very. My mom is very creative um, with her cooking. Very creative, yes. Damn. <laughs> That's so funny. Yo, my mother is a chef. She was a chef. So, like, it was always popping in my house. Like, <laughs> I, I, like, my mom's such a great cook. I, like, went to college and then I came back home to live and I was like, why can't I fit in any of my pants anymore? And it was like, oh, I'm eating my mom's cooking again. No regrets. Yeah. <laughs> None at all. No regrets. I can only oh feel with more fried chicken, beans and rice. My yeah. mom's side of the family from New Orleans, so it's all of that like good soul food. Oh yeah. my gumbo. god, New Orleans food, ooh. Yes, yep. mm-hmm. yes, that gumbo be hitting hard, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know what, I, um, this is like where my black card gets revoked. I think that gumbo is gross. Yeah. You have not had Disconnect. the <laughs> Disconnect. <laughs> Are you like taking off my earrings? <laughs> what? Damn, I'm about to get what? my ass whooped. Like. It's time to stop. It's time uh, to stop. Let me take out my rectangle. Uh, I just threw up my Hufflepuff mug. You know I can't fight. Listen. I'm crying. What um, is going? When have you? When have you had gumbo? Like, um, I went to. Okay, so mind you, both times, the first time it was prepared by um in this. I was in Uptown Minneapolis, so at a white restaurant. Ah, well. Let me rephrase. Oh, I've well, never there you had go. gumbo made by a black person. Um, <laughs> let me just say that. So you got to go to the world. You have the best gumbo, especially like seafood or the one with, with the red red beans. and the, oh. My and mom was married to, my mom used to be married to a guy from New Orleans and like their family used to be, oh, this food is so good. Oh, this if you ever come out to SoCal, I'll have my mom or one of my aunties make you soul food, authentic Louisiana gumbo. So oh, my God. I love you in these comments for that gumbo. I know, y'all. Well, Starla apparently is going to make me gumbo. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Yes. And India said, uh, if it makes you feel better, I can't stand watermelon, which, yo, watermelon is disgusting. <gasps> it's disgusting. It's like I don't like mushy food. Like it's like baby food. What? <laughs> oh my god! Watermelon like, is so what, what good. Else you like? What else 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 you like? It's you the superior melon. melon. Antelope is the superior melon, but I like watermelon because it's not mushy. <gasps> Yo, watermelon is not talk? supposed to be mushy. Like Speaking of mush, can we talk about that scene with the peach? <gasps> Mm-mm, don't like it. Nope. Oh, oh, Yo, oh, my oh, gay oh, ass was that. feeling that scene though. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Jesus. I was I'm like, wow, I love Call Me by Your Name. Uh, very interesting scene. Yep, I thank the I Lord. Mean, I was like, Get him with the peach. The Get thing the is, peach. though, I don't know if the peach thing, what was going on there, bothered me as much as it was that uh, Yanni was um, hooking up with his cousin. Um, we got to just pretend that I have. <laughs> I did some mental gymnastics about that. I because I couldn't comprehend. I'm like, so Yanni's her brother, and I thought Juanita was her cousin. But you know what? That's not true. That can't be true. Family friends. They're family friends. Yeah. And it was she, like, uh, it's like, you know how you have your, every friend of your mama is your uncle or your tia? You yeah. know what I mean? How, like, I have so many tias and uncles that we are not blood related. You so know, wait, were, they, were they not related? I thought they, I thought they, they were. Cousins. Didn't they get, yeah, they were second cousins. And I think Juanita got taken into the house. So they weren't like blood related, but they were still considered family. So it depends on if, cause I feel like in, I feel like in Latinx culture, there is like sangre, there's like your blood family. And then there's your, we've all agreed that this person is family, even though we don't have sangre, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, and let's go with family friend, no blood, because that is how my mind can comprehend that. 
Yeah, that was the. Uh, Shane says the book has a peach scene too. Yes. Thank <laughs> the Lord. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was like, I read that scene like four times. I was heated. I was oh, in like a good mood. <laughs> Hit him with the peach. Oh my gosh. Hit him with the peach. Amen. You know? Trying to see if there's anything else I want to talk about that I haven't, but I feel like, I don't know, mm -hmm. overall. Wait, what did y'all rate the book? Let's talk about that. Okay. Uh, four stars. Okay. Yeah. I think I was okay. four. I think I did four too, I think. Okay. Or three. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. And I thought it was going to be a three star read at first. Really? So, yeah. My Goodreads notification says 62. Bro. <laughs> I'm done. Like I, I, oh my god, it's really bad. It's Wait, really what? Bad. No, no, no. I've just been avoiding Goodreads for like a very, very long time. I don't know because I just I haven't been writing reviews. I just I've been rating. And you know how like I, I use I like when I first started getting back into reading, I would read a book and then as soon as I finish it, I would review it. And now I'm just like, I don't know what happened. What happened to the chat? <laughs> Oh, huh? it disappeared. Did it disappear for you guys? Yeah. Oh, I'm no. still seeing it. Okay. I was just curious. So I guess it went really like quick. Um, yeah, I gave it four stars. I gave it five. Um, if I could rate it higher, I would. Really? Nice. I really? Think the book is incredible. There's like other things too. Like, did y'all notice how animals, like the magical realism and the animal element of the book, and how What's like. Not yes, with the with with the um the what are they called? Did you say penguins? Pigeons. <laughs> pigeons. Yeah, I was like, that's not what they're called. You know, the New York penguins. <laughs> also, consistently throughout the book, different animals are used to teach lessons. Like mm -hmm. the puffer fish is used to teach lessons. Um, mm -hmm. Sharks are used. There's like constant animal imagery, and then there's a part where um. It was one of my actually one of my favorite quotes from the book. Um, was it the goat part? The goat part was awesome too. Yeah, that, I, was, that was one of the quotes I was going to share. Okay. Yeah, it's oh, and there's also one of them says, "Animals don't learn in hindsight; they only learn when punished right then." And she was talking about domestic violence and about how um, when Juan beat her. She was comparing it to how her mother would have reacted and her mom would have pulled out the meat cleaver and scalped him, is what she said. Uh, <laughs> and which I loved. But there's I'm trying to find a specific part, but um there's a bit where Anna is talking about the trauma that she experiences, and she says something about how she can handle it because she's been used to being oh yeah. So she says, um, wait. Da -da 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 -da. Nope, that's not it. Wait. And her mother also has like this like magical realism ability to influence the weather. Yeah, yeah, they mentioned that and they made a reference to her being like a bruja or something. They did. And then and it ties into the early part of the book on page 37. It says, um, I don't want to leave our house in Los Guayacanes painted the color of buttercups by my late grandfather the only house for miles that has survived all the hurricanes. Um, and so it makes me think that because of her mother's power, that maybe it is a ancestral, because it's not like logistically, it's not possible that only one house in the whole island can survive a hurricane. And so like there's yeah. like, just very clearly um, like a theme with that. Where the hell is it? But um, yeah, there's a, there's a part in the book where she says, oh yeah, um, She's talking about the first time that Juan slaps her. And it says, um, I look at my feet, I hold back my tears, slump my shoulders and retreat just enough to show deference. I have learned a lot from growing up with animals. Um, and just, it's a theme throughout the book, like from, from almost yeah. page one, like animals are used. And I just feel like there's so many like highly brilliant um, themes and like very clever nuance, like just, throughout the book that you can read it so many times and still catch more. And that was the yeah. big reason why I rated it five stars because what she packs into this novel is nothing short of brilliant, like mm -hmm. addressing colorism, immigration, magical realism, 
uh, female sexuality, ownership of your body, um, moral ambiguity, generational mm-hmm. trauma. Like I was like, there's, there's no way. Yeah. This book is. Yeah. I really liked it. I can't. <laughs> I, I really, I feel like I had to check myself at the end of the book because I'm so used to like reading fictional books where everything ties up perfectly at the end. Or like even contemporary books where I like look for the ending to just be like, okay, everything's better now. Or like have some type of closure where like everything's figured out. Mm-hmm. And at the end of this book, I was just like, okay, everything isn't figured out. And I was just like, so. But then I had to check myself because it's like, this is a realistic written, like this is not supposed to make you feel better at the end. Okay. You're supposed to understand what happened, what was going on during that time and learn from it and, and experience with that character. You're not looking for pretty bows at the end. So I had to check myself with that. But I think it was just perfectly done. The interview at the end was just like, I wish you guys could hear it. But it was I'll so good. look that up, though, because yeah. I, I want to look up some interviews and hear what she has to say about the book. The interview oh, at the end was really, really, really good. This one warrants really a reread. And I think like the uh, this would do really well as an audio book, too. So I want to get the audio book. The audio book was really good. Yeah. The audio book was really good. If the writing is totally made to like be heard, you know? I mm-hmm. do think in terms of the ending, I got I got heated because I read a, a white girl. And you know what? And I've officially decided, like, I really do not care what non-Latinx people think of this book. Because if I didn't have my identity as a Mexican to read and understand this book, there is no way I would catch everything that I caught. There's just no way. So if you're not Latinx in some way, shape, or form, I honestly don't care about your analysis of the book. I'm not saying you can't read it or whatever, but I'm just like, I'm not interesting yeah, um, yeah. And i was reading a review today on um on instagram this white woman re- reviewed the book and she was like i just wanted a happy ending and i was like <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i'm saying i had to check myself which, which i totally I feel like i feel you on that and it's like it's a it's a but the thing that struck me is i was like I was trying to figure out like why this bugged me so much. And I think it's largely because, and I'm not saying all white folks who have immigrated to this country have done well, you know, and that there's not like white folks in poverty, but a large part of the reason I feel like is that she was expecting a happy ending is because white immigration stories as a whole ended well, like white people. Well, right, right. So it's possible for like, for a white person to pick up this book to, to expect a happy ending because they're thinking about the lens of how white people immigrated. And the yeah. white immigration versus immigration of color uh, totally story is not mm-hmm. the same. And so yeah. I personally, though, I loved the ending so much because to me, it had so much joy. Like her mother finally, her she and her mother finally found each other. And Anna realized, recognized her dreams. And she had hope. Like for the first time in the book, she was like, I'm going to do this. And we don't get to see whether or not it gets done. But yeah. she said, these are the things I'm going to do. And to me, that was a happy ending. It was like a woman finding her agency and her power and being like, I have hope. Um, and again, the ending kind of made sense to me because not just because of like the fact that it was realistic, but also because if this is truly a great grandmother, a grandmother talking to future generations, what like that makes sense. Like, yeah, like what was your life like with grandpa in the sixties? This is what it was like. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Um, and I feel like we have so many of those parents, like uh, my grandparents on my, on my black side are still married, but they're not together. You know, like they sleep in separate yeah. bedrooms. And yeah. so it's like, this is also a story that I could get even from the black side of my family, you know, mm-hmm. right. but from a different yeah. culture. So to me, there was a lot of joy in the ending, honestly, you know, cause it's like, she talks about how even if she had run away with C- with Cesar, the, the love of her life, she would not have been happy because he could not have provided for her. She didn't have any agency. She didn't have any connections. Like even if she had like followed her heart, she still would have ended up hungry and oppressed and poor and her child would have had no opportunity. Um, yeah. You know? It's, it's a very American way of thinking in terms of the just follow your heart. So yeah. when I was like reading it, I had to sit with it for a while because my first thought is like, no, go with Cesar. Like you'll be Mm -hmm. so much happier with him. But the question is, 
would she have? Because so much of Latinx culture is based around family and some and making hard sacrifices and not having for your family. Her family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, yeah, you know, her mom was coming, her little brother was coming, and her duty is to them, her blood family, as opposed to this sort of whim, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's it's a very because I am so Americanized, it's a very Americanized thing to say, like, no, you got to give up everything for love. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you're taking care of yourself. And right. while that is important, this wasn't a book written for white Americanized audiences. It was written for Latin and Latinx audience. And that yep. is very central to our culture, yep. sacrificing everything for family. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to read her other two books. I'm so impressed. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a continuation of this one, is it? No. They're all standalones, I believe. The Angie Uh, Cruz Extended Universe. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. I I fucking love this book so much. Yeah. She's a really good author. Definitely. I like her as a person. You guys got to find that interview. That interview was really, really good. I will. Priscilla from Lucky Charm says, I'm letting next folks think about Latinx books. True. (laughs) Yeah, it's always so interesting with me when people are like, I, I just don't connect with the character. Like, you're not supposed to connect with it. It's supposed to be an experience. You have to know how to how to how to figure out what you're supposed to enjoy and what you're supposed to like experience. You have to know what you're reading. Every book that you read, you don't have to be like best buddies with the the MC. Like this book was more of like an. Ex- it's an experience, you know? You're supposed to read it and understand and learn. Yeah. You, know, I know. You, just wanna, you just wanna comment on some reviews and you just be like, you know, I ain't gonna yes. do it. <laughs> It's yeah. not even worth it, you know? It's not my place and it's your like, experience with the Also, book I don't good. think people realize that you don't have to rate every book. You can have humility. You know, like if I'm reading a book, like when I first read Crazy Rich Asians, it wasn't a five star for me. So I didn't rate it at all because that book is so heavily steeped in Chinese culture that I was like, it's not ethical for me to rate this book because I'm clearly missing so Mm -hmm. much. Like Mm -hmm. I can talk about it. I can talk about my experience reading it, but it just really doesn't make sense for me to be critically analyzing a book from a culture that I know nothing about, you know? And so it's like, yeah. yeah. I get very I get very frustrated with some of the reviews I've seen on this book where people are talking about this book as if they're an authority. And I'm like, <laughs> like have you there's, there's a way to like rate a book without criticizing things you might not understand. Like if, if you do like a, if I'm reading a book from like a group that's not my own, I would do it based off of enjoyability or sure. more like technical writing styles. Sure. You know, the, technical yep. things that you can't always separate and even then that's iffy because mm-hmm. you know I'm coming at it from a very westernized thing mm-hmm. like when I first read Dominicana I was thrown off by the lack of quotation marks mm-hmm. because that is a very westernized writing style yep. and it took me a while to realize like okay well this isn't for a westernized audience or like a Euro- eurocentric audience yep so you know reviewing is weird yeah. It's good to come in with it's, a yeah. critical mind of not just of the book, but how you are looking at it and how you are reviewing it and where you're coming from. And whatever prejudices or preconceived notions you bring mm-hmm. in to, you know what I mean? Like you can't divorce all of the things you've internalized from your experience reading a book, no matter who you are, you know? And I, I think that I wish that, that that's something that is a level of, Honesty, I would like to see more in the book reviewing community Mm -hmm. is a little bit more self-awareness, you know, especially because there are so many times where I noticed that white reviewers in particular, it's not just an issue with white reviewers, but white readers in particular who are reading these own voices books suddenly lose the ability to recognize these very important themes. But if the book is the same story is told from a white perspective, they're like, oh my God, it was so feminist. Like, for example, like, I think that the feminism in this book is going to get missed by a lot of white reviewers. Mm -hmm. But white Mm -hmm. reviewers were so good at acknowledging the feminism in The Handmaid's Tale. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, it's not subtle. It's not Mm -hmm. like you have to be Latinx in order to see it. It's like you just Mm -hmm. have to be reading it with the same level of care that you give to your literature by white folks. And I I don't see that enough um, and it bugs me. Yeah. There's another yeah. reason why I don't care what you think if you're not with Phoenix on this book. Like, I just don't. Yeah. 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 I, I like to add that I'm not, like, divorced. This is, like, a relatively new 
concept for me. And there are books that if I could go back and reread them and look at them from, or at least try to understand the perspective I was reading them from, yeah. I would maybe rate or review them differently. Like there are books yeah. that I think I was too harsh on Aristotle and Dante discovered the secrets of the universe mm. because I felt like I didn't understand some aspects of it because it was the first LGBT, LGBT plus book that I had ever read and coming from it, I think I was too harsh on it. And if I could go back and I do want to go back and reread it and reanalyze it and think, did I go in with any biases or prejudices that I did, was not aware of when I read and reviewed it? And I think that's part of being an ethical reviewer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I feel like you with certain books you have to know whether you're gonna critically rate it, whether you're just yes. gonna talk about mm -hmm. your experience and not rate it, or like you have or you rate it off of enjoyment. Like I, I yeah. went to Twitter a few times because I would read a book and be like, Oh well, I enjoyed it, but like I know it was a trashy book. So like should I like not rate it high or like but it's like you have to know how you're gonna rate your book, like either enjoyment, critical or just like talk about how you felt reading it and not read it at all, just to respect yeah. the author and the audience that it was actually directed towards. Like it's up to you as a reviewer to pick and choose like what type of reviewing you're doing. You know what I mean? It doesn't yeah. always have to be critical, 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 but it's so interesting to me when people want to be critical and when they don't want to be damn critical. I'm like, oh, that? oh now you want to fix the person? Right. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get into that, but that's just like, that's a whole nother sip of tea there. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. That's a very interesting discussion that I think should be had more in the community in terms of how we're approaching certain books and how we're looking at them. And, you know, also just admitting when you've made mistakes, you know, mm -hmm. like when yeah. you maybe didn't come at something from, I don't want to say the right perspective, but from a perspective that you're not used to. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. Y'all, I'm trying to go eat this food. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to go to sleep. I literally <laughs> saw the moment. Here. I was like, "Oh, they're looking a lot over, like at the side." <laughs> My kitchen is like over here, so I'm like, "They're like making some eyes." <laughs> like, right you want to be go like? like <laughs> okay. No, I totally get that. It's still early for me, so I'm like ready to go I'm but to study. Yes. I'm supposed to be studying Korean but I'm about to study this damn pillow I don't know I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call my friend we'll see we'll see how that happens I'm done <laughs> any closing statements guys or comments um, before so we can like wrap it up seamlessly <laughs> I don't think so I feel like um I feel like I've we started. covered everything <laughs> yeah. everything well most of it yeah you know I enjoyed both books Oh, I see. Yeah. I already forgot about Shadow Chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. y'all, I, I I, would be shocked if this doesn't make my faves of 2019 list. You know? I'll be shook if it, shook if it does. <laughs> wow. I can't speak now. You know, I will be shook if it does not. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think, I think I'm, I'm glad this was one of the books we had to read because it kind of I, I don't think I would have known about this book if it wasn't a part of, because I didn't see anyone talk about, like, there's certain books that I don't see people talk about, or, like, I, I'm trying to get away from just picking up popular books and reading popular books, you know what I mean? And reading and broadening, like, my spectrum. So I'm definitely glad I picked this one up, because it's a learning experience. Okay. Oh, my God, yes. Priscilla says i'm really looking forward to reading dominicana i cannot wait to hear your thoughts on this book yes please I'm hopefully ready. we didn't spoil too much <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah. you so much guys for watching and i love doing this with you guys it was so much fun it was it was, fun. It was a good time okay, okay. bye guys bye, bye.